brief presentation. Then we have a panel of folks here from the city that can respond to questions. And our meeting facilitator, Colonel Barnes, will talk, talk you through how we're going to run that process. We post questions up here, she'll go through that with you, so we make sure our city council gets the information as well. So welcome tonight, and let's get started. Okay, thank you all for coming. Um, thanks for those who are um, members and kind of have businesses here in the business park. We actually are happy also that we see folks who probably are um, residents here, residents here in the live here in the Challenger Way area. My name is Colwell Barnes. I'm the director of community engagement for the city of Santa Rosa. And the format for this meeting, they spoke a little bit about it, but in the interest of actually having everybody hear the questions having a process, we, you have, each of you has a table captain down to your table. With the table captains, raise your hand. Those folks are actually all people who wish to work for the city of Santa Rosa, um, in fire, police, housing services, and then we have a guest from the county at under the table. And what we're asking you to do is actually look at this, on the table with some information. We're asking that you sign in. You don't have to, but it allows us to see and get a sense of how many folks were here. Um, also on the table is the frequently asked questions um, information and then information about tonight, including the agenda. The presentation is about 20 minutes long, and then we'll do a little break for you to write any additional questions. We'll collect the questions and kind of can pass them up. I will be reading them so that everybody can hear them, and then the appropriate per um, panel uh, person or person will respond. I want to recognize we've got Council Member Tom Schwedhelm present. And I think at this point, that's the only uh, council member that's here. So with that, um, are we ready to get started? So the panel members are actually Dave, Dave Wine, who introduced himself earlier. We've got Kelly Kuykendall, who's the Housing and um, Homeless Services Manager, City of Santa Rosa. Jeannie Lynn Holmes with Catholic Charities. Um, Mike Lazzarino from uh, the Police Department, a lieutenant. Rick Kohut, uh, Police. And then Paul Lowenthal from our Fire Department and Jason Nutt from Transportation and Public Works. And again, my name is Kalua, and I will be back shortly after the presentation. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? All right, okay. So I'm, Jenny Lynn and I are just gonna be giving a um, brief overview of the Homeless Encampment Assistance Pilot Program. Just to provide you some background on the, the pilot program. Hold on, let me grab my notes so I don't miss my key points here. Um, as a result of growing concerns regarding um, encampments throughout the city, last spring and summer, um, we started to conduct a citywide evaluation of encampments. And we really wanted to go about this in, a, in a, both a collaborative and a strategic approach. Um, HOST was already working throughout the county and the city with law enforcement, but through this effort, we brought together um, pretty much representatives from all of our city departments, some community partners, and Catholic charities. So we identified um, encampments throughout the city we prioritize those encampments, encampments, excuse me, based on size, vulnerability of individuals living in the encampment, um, health, safety, and fire risks, risks, and property ownership. And we first prioritize those encampments that were owned by uh, the city of Santa Rosa or located on property, public property. The city council uh, endorsed or supported the pilot program in July of 2017, and we launched the pilot last summer, so a year ago. City Council has also um, provided additional funding to support the pilot program, including funding for Sam Jones Hall to increase uh, shelter bed capacity there to support the encampment efforts, and also funding for staff at Sam Jones Hall to help individuals entering that shelter to more rapidly access housing. Council has also approved funding through the HOST program for housing resources. That's both for temporary and permanent housing options. And they've also um, increased funding to the Homeless Services Center in downtown Santa Rosa to um, extend hours at that drop-in center. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jenny Lynn to talk a little bit about um, the Homeless Outreach Services team. Okay, so just to talk a little bit about um, the host team, if we call it that by short, that's what uh, 
we commonly reference it by. It's funded by the city and the county. It's a street outreach program that is working uh, with individuals who are living outdoors to help them obtain long-term permanent housing placement. And I want to really emphasize the long-term housing placement. There may be intermediate steps that we work with people along the way, but really our long-term goal is to find people housing. Um, in the last year, we were able to house straight from the streets into, through this program funded through the city, uh, 145 people, which was a total of about 651 people we were able to permanently house in the last year. Um, this street outreach team is a part of a larger strategy that the city and the county have funded around the area of homelessness and housing. And so when we're looking with, working with individuals who are living in our encampments or on our streets, the first thing we do is try to assess a person's vulnerability, immediate health and safety risks. And then it's to continue the conversation, work with individuals to kind of build that relationship when they're ready to kind of take those next steps. Uh, the street outreach team can often place people into our Sam Jones Hall shelter, which is a single adult shelter of about 213 beds. And that is one option, but we know not everybody is wanting to take that route. So we'll continue to work with people while they're still living or in either a temporary option or a more permanent option until we find that housing. Um, the biggest component that's been really great to be added is um, not just the expansion of Sam Jones Hall to be what's called a lower barrier shelter where we'll actually allow people to bring their pets, bring their belongings, provide on-site storage, so you know property is not a not a concern for people, but more so is the the housing uh, investment that the city has been able to make. Over the last uh, year, year and a half, we've been able to in more creatively house individuals through a variety of programs. One is a reunification program where we can help people get reunified with family or friends that will provide them permanent housing. Another option we can provide people is to actually help subsidize their rent through a program called Rapid Rehousing, where we'll subsidize the rent, pay for security deposit, but most importantly, we will actually case manage the person once they're in the home, once they are placed, to continue that house, you know, continue to keep them housed and not uh, fall back into homelessness. We also have programs like the Palms Inn, where we converted a 104-unit motel into permanent supportive housing. And most recently, the City Council has approved what's called a Housing First Fund. And that fund is really aimed at creatively engaging our real estate, landlord, and property management op uh, companies to provide options to rent to the people we're working with. We do it through what's called a risk mitigation pool, where we'll actually provide uh, insurance funds or uh, funds to help a person if something happens to the unit or something happens while all, one of our tenants is there, we'll help pay back whatever might have happened. We also have sign-on bonuses to rent to the people we're working with of $1,000 per household placed. And we're also working with um, within these landlord incentives to help create habitable, habitable units that then get rented back to the people we're working with. So we're really trying to creatively address the housing challenge and create more units within our existing housing stock for people who are working with the host program. Um, we also very much work in collaboration with law enforcement and our public safety partners um, to not only make sure that when one of these pilot programs are going on, we're very much on the same page, they know who we're working with, but on more importantly, we're also providing entryway into other services, not just Catholic Charity Services, but services across the entire county um, through a coordinated entry assessment program. So there's a lot of options that our street outreach team is able to bring um, through the creativeness of the city council as well as through our service partners across the county. So over the past year, the city, um, through this program and its partnership with Catholic Charities, has uh, addressed three encampments. I'll go over those briefly in the next few slides. We've also worked with the County of Sonoma in their efforts to address the encampments at Roseland Village and Joe Rajota. The first one that we worked on last summer collaboratively, collaboratively was the Farmers Lane Extension. This was in one year ago, so August of 2017. And approximately 70% of the individuals there, that was about 30 people, worked with Catholic Charities um, and accepted services, so they went into shelter and a number of other interventions. In addition to relocating the individuals from this um, encampment, it included extensive cleanup of a buildup of debris um, and trash that had accumulated at the property for a number of years, and also clearing of brush and trimming up of um, 
trees to reduce the fire risk. This property, there was identified a, a huge fire risk at this property before we, we resolved this, this one. Excuse me. Jaylen, do you want to add anything about the interventions here? Moving on, after Farmers Lane Extension, we identified the encampment at the 101 underpass um, as the next priority encampment that was largely located at 6th Street. This was initially identified um, early last fall. We had plans to resolve the encampment in uh, October and then the fire struck, as you all know, and that was delayed until November. Um, Catholic Charities, again, through the host team, worked with the individuals that were there, um, and they about 55 accepted services working with the host team. We, with this particular encampment, we increased, as I mentioned earlier, increased shelter beds at Sam Jones Hall to accommodate individuals that wanted to come into shelter. We also expanded the services at the um, Homeless Services Center and uh, resources were available for individuals as well for, for housing. So Doyle, Doyle Community Park was the third encampment that we addressed through our evaluation of encampments that I talked about in the first slide. This was identified in the December, January timeframe and resolved in January. And I will say that with each of the encampments that we've worked in, we have learned a lot and each one is unique and different and requires a different approach. And I think the lesson learned from Doyle Park is that timing of your outreach and your enforcement are key here. So there's a creek that runs through Doyle Park and there were other sort of regulations and restrictions in play that required us to move more quickly with enforcement at this particular location than we would have liked to. So stormwater um, state regulations requiring us to um, ensure that we're addressing encampments along the creekway. So I'll just be honest with this one and say that our enforcement got a little bit ahead of our engagement here. We were not able to resolve this encampment um, like we've been able to do with some of the other ones. And we have learned from that and adjusted our approach moving, moving forward with other encampments. Um, like I said, this is a pilot program. We are we're figuring it out as we're going along and we're, we're, we're changing our plan as needed. This location, we continue to receive complaints from uh, community members and we're working, working with them, um, working with the police department and the host team to engage individuals that return to this area and are camping overnight. So on to Corbett Center Parkway. Um, that's why we're all here this evening, and thank you for being here. I'm going to let Jenny Wynn, yes, Jenny Wynn. <laughs> I'm going to let Jenny Lynn talk about the outreach um, and engagement efforts that are underway. So one of the things we do when we first um, are presented with one of these um, encampments is to create a services strategy, and every single place is unique, as Kelly mentioned, and so. One of the things that's extraordinarily important is for us to try to get out and figure out what are the needs of the individuals who are living in that encampment. And so in this case, we knew that we had the uniqueness of the RVs and the uh, need for us to find some sort of options for that. So HOST has been out um, working with individuals living in the encampments. We've been able to engage uh, 97 people since we've been able to, since we started it, working with individuals to get assessed, enrolled in our coordinated entry system, which ultimately leads is a pathway to permanent housing. Uh, we've been able to place 12 people and well, we've provided placement for 25, 25, 12 have already been able to be ex uh, accepted at the site. Um, and we have an additional 24 we're working on transitioning in the next couple of days to a week. Um, the biggest thing we understand is some individuals are going to need some sort of temporary intervention. Some are gonna still be working towards that long-term permanent but we've been able to add a uniqueness to some of the funding that the city has provided in that when we are able to get an RV that is operational and meets the requirements of an RV parking uh, or an RV uh, actual camp that has hookups and everything like that, we're actually gonna be able to subsidize them at the RV camp. So we'll be able to pay for them on a weekly basis as long as they're continuing to move forward in their long-term plan towards housing. Uh, we'll be able to help transition them over into an RV camp and help pay for the cost of that because we don't want a financial barrier to be in the way of an individual receiving the services that they need. While we are working with these individuals to help them with their temporary transitions. The most important thing I hope people leave with is to know that that is not the end of the journey for us. 
for us, we're going to continue to work with the individuals, even in their temporary location, whether it's an RV camp, a shelter, or somewhere else, to, towards that permanent housing placement. And so we'll be continuing with the individuals in the RV camps to follow their services plan and make sure that um, everyone has the opportunity to access the housing resources that we I talked about earlier in the presentation. Turn it back over to Kelly for that. A couple points on the slide I just wanted to talk about. In terms of weekly cleanups, um, our transportation and public works department um, is scheduling a cleanup of the storm drains tomorrow. And we're going to be doing cleanups on an as-needed basis. We'd like to try and do those weekly. It just depends on our capacity. But we will be doing a cleanup tomorrow of the storm, drain, of the storm drains. Um, I think enforcement for criminal activity, that is ongoing. It's been going on for the last few weeks, and we'll continue that, coordinating it with the outreach efforts. And just challenges, I know we've touched a bit about this already in the presentation, but this is um, the first large vehicle encampment that we're dealing with, so we're facing some challenges in terms of how to best address that and how to best develop our services strategy around that. We are, as the city, we're, we're responsible for coming up with um, services for the individuals that are, are, are here before we can move forward with relocating them. Um, keeping that in mind, our goal, I, this went out in the press release and some of the communication about the meeting tonight, our goal is mid-September. We don't have a set date yet, and um, this is going to require on